October in a one-point victory the last time the Wave Riders won. Both these teams coming off the <coughs> loss that you see to old Kaluna, who was just an absolute stud. His freshman season got put up to Marcy towards the end in the year where Hilo won the state title, one of the best endings in the history of the HHSA Division I championship. Uh, doink off a goal post for the game-winning field goal. The only way able to be a legend. He was a freshman part of that team. Now, as a senior, hoping to lead his team to a fifth title this year. Let's take a look at our officials. Stephen Fromm wears the white hat. Marshall Harvest, Todd Lynch, Blaze Nahu, Bo Wade, Sean Hanohano, and Travis Takayama. Great seven-person crew, by the way. If you'd like to join the Big Island Football Official Association, go ahead and contact uh, Todd Lynch. You can find him online as well. So uh, they're always looking for new officials. Uh, there's a shortage of officials around the state. So if you can help out your local association, you want to help the youth, please do so. Hilo won the toss, elected to the first, and Trey Nelson Langacker, a soccer stud, located towards Zane Yanazaki. He's got some great speed, and Sean Ichishida. And so Sean Ichishida was looking at it, and Zane Yanazaki will take it. Brings out a 10. You know, the team that has 
special teams defense because coming right after it with Ezekiel Ledward and Noah Quintana. So that's where Kayla Kay will have it to start off the night. Swing it, the Zippy and starting lineups. Cody Jones played football for the first time. Was participating in volleyball last year. The coach and his friends saw his athleticism after he wanted to play. He jumped in at the opportunity. Offensive line going to be put to the test, but Jakai Posolda, all fifth selection last year. He's the anchor of that front five. Yoshua Jokey, very good as well. you got to go to the likes of Lawrence Nahapulua and Benalu Willis because we can go there, or at least Nahale, to help pick up the load. Nahapulua, first carry of the night. Gonna run it just shy of the 25 yard line. Isaiah Flores, the junior linebacker, makes the tackle. Defensively reunifying some studs. Now Darish, look out for him. He might be amazing this year. He could be an all this selection with Saul. And uh, earlier, you saw Isaiah Flores made the tackle. You see Ledward on the front side of his defensive line. I mean, he's the most emotional player you're gonna find. Comes the 
Jackson on the drive on third downs. We're going some motion. Jones has options. Jones lets it fly. This one is intercepted. It's Caden Duba. But first, you got to check the marker, though. Caden Selwyn just plucked it out of the air.
incomplete pass. He's having trouble holding on to the football. That, that is what's definitely a concern. I, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it looks like it comes out when he starts the motion forward. But it may not. I was almost like he, I don't know, man. It's almost like he threw it with the nose of the football if unintentionally. But yeah, that's... Yeah, but he goes back to the letter and everything you've talked about, man. But it's, that's tough. Jones now launches downfield for Willis, who's got it. Kaimano Willis, wrapped up by John Miyamoto. A near turnover turns into a huge play. No problem there, holding on to the football. That is a nice pass, perfectly placed for his receiver to catch it. This is a big game for Keanu K. The Wave Riders throwing it. That's a tight spiral, too. He goes up, gets it, he's behind the defense. Nice catch, big play. Part of a heavy underclassman group that's built as the future of this program. What a pain team sophomores on that bunch. And picked up a game of 31, the largest pass play of the night for the Wave Riders and Cody Jones. Jones again. What a marker down. Hands off to Hercules Nahale, the seven head coach wife Nahale. Swept out in front of his own bed. The first, the marker, Caden Silva, thought of him out there. Illegal shift.
90 to go. A marker down. But first, this timeout. Taken by head coach Wyatt Valhalla. Tabui sends that one back. This one goes right near the 15 yard line as uh, Demary Holloway. And they get the tackle. The Heels offense is back on. They're running the ball effectively well. You can see it. 55 rushing yards out of their 60 total yards of offense this evening. It's about 11 miles away here, but these two squads about 76 miles away from each other. Kaluna, third year in the varsity team, has pulled up his freshman year. He transferred to Keao, sophomore and junior season, wanted to come back home. Grew up in Conantil at the age of eight. Seriously, you know, I wanted to have more presence in the pocket longer to really showcase his skills. Put a lot of pylon ball in the offseason. Which helped him get more physical mental reps. And it off Kanai. Uh, tripped up there by Nehasi Fale Ofa. One of the Wave Riders. Second year varsity managed a great speed and footwork and also a wrestler. The Wave Riders. Makes sense. They can talk about that. Holding on. Spinning him down. Try and handle for any opposing foe. 45 to go, quarter one. Galuna, kind of a soft shot over the middle. And across is Noah Quintana. The backup running back. Able to run into a 40 for a gain of 14 first down yards. Just swinging and dropping his shoulder, his elbow, and throwing kind of a sidearm to get it there. It's still good enough for the first down. But take a look at the. Uh, the posture in the, in, in the back, in the, you know, in the pocket. And then kind of just right from the doesn't wind up, doesn't even get a full range of motion, but still gets the ball there. It's yeah. got a lot of strength. And Lewis slings this one out. It's a catch for Josiah Williams. Williams to midfield. Right at the stick. One of 12 juniors on this team. Good tall target for this group that kind of lacks size. And his confidence in his route running and his hands much better over the last week. Last two offensive plays, averaging 10 yards a play. Not bad. He gets outside. Uh, you know, and coaches will, will look back at film and say, he had an opportunity to stop it for the two yard game. And it's real easy. Uh, like I've even talked about it. Fundamentals, got to wrap up, got to bring it down. Hard to do, easier to say. So we are now moving in the pocket, thrown up in his spot.
has a rare trip up to the leeward side. Leeward Coast. They'll take on Lion Eye, put on 2 0, picking up wins against Waterloo and Castle. Start of the second quarter, great crowd on hand here this evening. As Eagles on top, 7 to 2. Kaluna launching one high for Harmon. Harmon, did he get a footed? Yes, he did. What a catch. Harmon was in, having a nagging and hamstring injury as he suffered all throughout the soccer season, then through football training camp, makes a tremendous grab for the Vikings. That really is a big catch. Oh, let's see here. Kind of looked like that foot might have hit the line. Yeah, really slow this down, guys, please. Yeah, we'll get another look at it. In the meantime, it's a slam across the goal line by Kanai for the touchdown. And, and it really doesn't matter what the matter is for the combine because they got another playoff and they're into the end zone for the score. But I would like to look at it from the pin. Wow. Very difficult to see it in fast motion, but we've got the opportunity to see it here in slow. Out of bounds. Out of bounds, yeah. yeah. It's a great job from our crew to find that shot. Thank you, guys. Who was that? Who had that, who had that shot? I got a shout-out for him. March! <laughs> nice shot. It's a D1 athlete. Uh, this one banged through by Trey Nelson Legacker. And it's 14 to 2. <coughs> Had a touchdown last week against Lahaina Luna. Got a couple this evening. Vikings had a tremendous run of very good running backs over the last half dozen years. And this season is really, for so many teams, especially the neighbor islands, when the COVID season canceled out prep football, it was tough for a lot of those squads to kind of replenish their numbers. But now some of those numbers are very slowly coming back as the Earth is kind of on its normal axis and spinning. And for the Vikings, again, the lowest numbers that they've had in a while. But the ones that have stayed are invested, they worked hard. Can I just want to win? 14-2. Seattle Kinney has kept this one close despite some turnovers and has some mishaps on offense. I can never throw it. I love it. It's very nice. No, I, I told you. I want to yell it, too. <laughs> Trey Nelson Legacker. Not only a soccer club member. Launchers this one. From around the 11. Here's Yamazaki. He lost the football. And recovered by the Vikings. Zion Kanai. Darius might have punched that ball out, and Kanai hops on it for Hilo. I mean, we just got done talking about this offensively. They were struggling, but a huge play, and it wasn't even really a big hit. It was just a nice strip on the ball, but Almaderis does a good job of putting his hand on it. I don't even think it was intentional to strip it. I think he was just going for the tackle, and at the same time, he knocks it out. And just like that, a string of plays pushes this one back in the direction of Hilo from the 31. And a keep by Coluna. Dodging, darting, dashing, dynamite! Coluna touchdown! Wow. Three words. Wow. That was amazing. He was able to get it around the end. And, and, I mean, this is an athlete. This guy's got some, some real speed. I mean, to be able to cut it twice like that and get around and in. Nice block. You got, a good, you got to give credit to the block there. That was a very nice block by Casey Silva on the edge. And, in fact, that's probably what did it. Langacker slides that one through again. anything like this. 14 points scored in the first 30 seconds of the quarter. And the Vikings in could I'd like to bring Hilo back to what it was once before. And part of that was emerging as a leader this season, handling pressure well, and just driving this team forward no matter what the numbers were. Father Peter played 0 
strong core, the nucleus supporting it. And the football and family, he's able to succeed this season. That one barely <laughs> across the inside of the pylon for a touchback. The all fifth honorable mention selection of Trey Nelson, linebacker. Football's really grown on him. The guy who reached the HHSA state final for soccer, the soccer member that we've seen here on our broadcast.
exactly what it's done. Not only does a short plays get you a first down, but it opens up the long plays. I mean, you're keeping these, the defense honest by by running the short routes, by running up the gut a couple times, and that allows for the, that occasional long ball. And that was just a perfection right there. That's the longest pass play for either team tonight. It's not bad when you're averaging 33 a grab. Trying to punch something in. We're going motions against the sweep. It gets swept out. Robert Boulay Ives right after him. That was as if they knew exactly what the call was on that play. Very nice play coming up off the edge, shedding the block, and then keeping the McKay to come from his linebacker position makes a nice stop. Well, they able to pull it down right to the ground. <coughs> They're the second down at 14. And going over the top is Yanaki. He's trying to stay patient. Our Fule able to make the tackle again. Yanaki is super talented, by the way. Great creative guy. He's a phenomenal photographer. He started in the seventh grade. He's trying to find a camera. I just love the use of punt pads. Seriously. Well, we were talking at practice, me and him. We were geeking out over camera talk. And we spent like the whole practice just talking about cameras and drones. I remember that. I was there. I know you're a tech guy, too. I am. I can have a couple of drones myself. Here's Jones. This one got it down. It was Silva to go up and swat it. Like a fly in the booth. Very nice play. Defensively. And that's about all he can do. And his reach, he needed to be able to reach as much as he could. And he could only do it with one hand to knock that down. Big play. Because I'll tell you what. Willis is open if that ball is if that ball is thrown over the defense and not short, that's a touchdown. Jones lofting one up one shot. Incomplete. Intended out there after Tafuli was there. Ichishida trying to go up and climb. A lot of Tafuli was guarding him. Ichishida does a good job here of playing defender. He's not in the right position to catch it. So he tries to go up and get it. And the collision there is kind of what does it. The battle of the number threes. That's a situation where you just have to go for it at that point. Just yeah. try to get something done. Yeah. And, and also by going for good faith in your team. You show them confidence. They can't blame you. Go for the holly. They had a good the drive going there, but defensively, you know, stepped it up in the end. Here comes Kenai. Kenai, put a marker down. And a second one down. And we tackled quickly by Wyatt Person. Uh, there's th I think there's three flags on the field. Yeah, there's, no, there's no flags left in the pocket. One came from the line judge, the other came from the back judge.
Silver mentioned he came from YFK. Uh, yeah, the transition was a little tough because the competition was just ultra high in practice when he first moved over, but heading into this year, he said he felt more confident. In fact, him and John Yamoto more or less transferred roughly the same year. John Yamoto number six, who also coached receiver and DB. Together, they've been a nice addition for this Washington team. Both offense and defense for those guys. Kaluna looking for options. Kaluna, wow, took a pop from behind. A great tackle there by Cutty Hailua. Yeah, that, that was a, a really good run with the football and then keeping the football because if you're hitting in the front end of the end of the back like that, there's a good chance that he, he did hold on to it pretty good. It looked like they were going after the football, so he held on to it. Who was to him?
that you don't want to see. There's just some big mistakes going on. There's some trip that's going on. You don't want it to affect you. There's going to be talk, right? I mean, it is a violent sport. There's going to be talk. But you don't want it to affect you too. Or the outcome.
this is an opportunity now for Gila to really show some defensive strength and, and keep Calipari in this game. 12 plays, 59 yards, took six minutes off the clock. That was the drive to start the game for the Wave Riders. Ended up with zero points, though, in interception. And here's the thing, Travis Finley, on its last offensive series, did a pretty good job of moving the football. Now they just need to finish. You'll hear coaches talk about finishing, finish the drive, finish the play. You know, it's, it's one man out of a dozen every play. Finish the play, finish your job. Now it's every one of these guys needing to finish the play and get into the end zone. Say sorry, Balu Rubio checks in. There's a slot on the left side.
Southern Delaware. Yeah.
muscle memory helps. These kids are watching from TV, films, and social media. They're seeing it. They're practicing it. It's crazy how good they're getting at their shooting. Little head fakes. Illegal kick out of bounds. And uh, Taylor Kate cannot have it at the 35. Do you have two folks? Uh, but I can show you the highlights of that. If you want to see it. How long is that video, by the way? It's about uh, 39 minutes long. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, this game is at 
Gorgon's campus, and congratulations to Kiala Kay. They're celebrating their 25th year in a gorgeous setting. It almost looks like a college campus, and they yeah, offer a lot of great things. Scan, JROTC, great Look at the program. backdrop. Amazing. It's awesome, right? They also have a really good video department. Oh, yeah. 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 They're, they're top notch. Their student media, very, very good. Right now, you know, being very, very good as well. 28 to 2 is the halftime score. The Vikings lost to Cornelina last year. That is the team that they're chasing. In fact, everyone's chasing the defending fifth champions. Heels got the pieces, but they need to find some consistency. The numbers, if you take a look at the halftime stats, will show 281 total yards for Hilo, 191 for Kelly Kay. And they're averaging, uh, Hilo's averaging 13.4 yards per play. On the other side, Kelly Kay has only got 5.3 yards and then the rushing average is pretty crazy. It's 13.8 yards a rush for Hilo. So they're doing it on the ground, and you can see in the total offense uh, department, 281 yards in total offense. Penalties, uh, I'm hoping that doesn't get out of hand, but the score isn't indicative of the time of possession. Hilo's been able to do it with a lot less time. Yeah, again, those 14 points scored the first 30 seconds as well of the second period. Tell you what, Kelly Kay does have... Some valuable pieces that they are molding and grooming, and one of them is the running back, Lawrence Mahapua Lua, at 200 pounds in ninth grade. He's got a bright future. Well, I mean, he's running like a big boy, but he's also running like a like a nice scat back because he's moving with his way up the field, and he's moving guys out of his way. He's doing what he needs to do. This is exactly what they need because you see it. They, they're able to pull, post some yards here offensively, and he's got probably the better uh, better way of. Uh, the yards yeah. per carry. But of course, he has got some defense too. Yeah, remember, and you made a great point earlier. Remember, they gave him the big player in the first quarter, adjusted well, and since then, haven't done too much significant damage allowed by that defense moving forward. And it's a good early season test for both of these squads, especially coming off a loss 70 or nothing yeah. for Kelly Kenny over Kapolei and the heartbreaker against Lahaina Luna for Hilo. Well, Hilo didn't really know what to expect out of a out of a team that had been beaten 70 nothing. So really what they needed to do was just stick to them, what they do best, worry about their own 111 offense, defense. They're doing a pretty good job of that tonight and then working off of some of the stuff that Calique is doing and taking advantage of it. Halftime is where defensive coordinators make their money. We'll see the adjustments on both sides. Downstairs to Jimmy when we come back. 28 to 2. You should bring a jacket. It's Jimmy Bender here with a PSA for bringing jackets to Hilo because somebody forgot to pack a jacket today. And it was on my way to Ross to get one when Kelly Nakasone from the truck texted me and said, Jimmy, I got one for you. Look, it's even got the logo. It's a nice jacket. And by the way, or you can do this. Christian, come on in here. You can do the Spectrum OC16 poncho if you've got to go that route. But either way, the bottom line is, please, when you come to Hilo, bring a jacket. It does rain no matter what you think. <laughs> hey, when we come back, second half will kick off and Kiala Kehe, can they get things going? We'll find out. Felipe and John right after the break here on Spectrum OC5. Nothing. And right now, Hilo's on top. 28-2 to two at this point. So, it's going to be a fun race here at the Big Island Interscholastic Federation as everyone's just racing for the one berth representing the league heading into the state tournament. When there's one berth, I mean, it gets... Very interesting by the time you get late September, early October. Well, that's why there's so much to work on, even if you're losing a game 28 to 2. Yeah. Because uh, there's still a lot of season to be played. I tell you what, this facility has been so gorgeous all throughout uh, the last few days. And uh, for the time being, uh, shout out to Kimo Weaver, athletic director here at Kamehameha Hawaii, and his phenomenal staff, Jeff Long, Hopu Haliniak, uh, for really opening the doors and letting us hang out here. So uh, to keep on everyone at Kamehameha Hawaii, we appreciate your hard work and your support of OC16 High School Sports. Keala Kehi tries to come back in this year. It's Waikia Keao, Kornawaya, the key to Waikia Keao, three home games in a row. You have to travel, especially when you're located over at Keala Kehi. I mean, it is so difficult and so tough. Super early. Uh, 75, 76 miles separates. These two schools from each other. Mm. Now, we're get the bus ride back, which is about an hour and 45 minutes. Sure. Yeah, so, uh, let me miss a plane ride. Titan. Kekua Lua. Wow, Titan Kekua Lua. 
Watch the play to Kelly Clears. After it deflects. They'll try and make a play out of scoop it up. But you put yourself in a vulnerable position, but you did the right move. Yeah. That just hit off the pads really hard. He does the smart thing by falling on it. On top of the weather, the elements, these players have been here a long time, too. Yeah. They were here since the end of the, uh, of the Kamehameha Hawaii HPA game. Kilo with their offense back on the field. Kilo's 8 of 11, 143 yards and a touchdown. The drive begins from the 30. Kaluna wanted to wind up, now takes off. Kaluna hung on to his legs by Leon Ibana. And then up top was Hasi Faleofo. He's got five yards out of that game. So, Eric Germundo was the head coach of the 2019 Vikings. On goal, Kaluna said, you know, we knew about him, but he wasn't sure if he was going to be a quarterback or a wide receiver. Performed well at the JV level as he drops his rock to Williams. And Williams climbs it up the field, gets to the 40. Initially the 41, and the game is 24. Donichi Shida makes the tackle. Here's Mark's vision. Yeah, right into your lip here. Nice block on the other side. Nice move. Makes another guy miss here. Good job just getting up the field. Moving the chains. Enjoying his time. Offense now for the Vikings. Give it to Kenai. Kenai got past the first wave of riders, but not before Falofa tags him. Falofa came from a very successful youth program, the Leeward Steelers, one of the best on that side of the island. So, you know, we had to flush out that couple A game the next day, and his mindset was focused on the next one. Yeah. Which was this official game. They did have a scrimmage against Kohala. Right now, averaging 11 a carry. For second and 10. Can you imagine building rock walls when you're like four or five I mean, years old? You know what? If, uh, if that 
it's a family business and you've got to do some work. What, what, how old? Uh, when you're about four or five, you started it. <laughs> Helping out, he said. I don't know if you've ever tried to lift like a heavy rock or a ball, but it does work on different muscles and it, and it has become a regular part of a workout. Really, this kid got a bounce. Kicking team. Receivers are elected to take it 25 yards on the spot of the kick. First down. Much, uh, it's very much like CrossFit. And those that, and you work in different muscles. I, I mean, I imagine it's helped. I mean, I know it's, you know, it's like a rocky workout. You're not using the weights that Ivan Drago's using. You're using rocks. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. All right, 51 remaining for the 35. Here comes Cody Jones. Jones, this one was a race. Guy Miyamoto was guarding Kanan Willis. Really tight coverage. But he goes from a rock wall lifter to an actual power lifter with Cody Jones, the quarterback for the Wave Riders. Actually set a couple of world records for his age group. I mean, when he was about a freshman, deadlifting 446 pounds, but that record only stood for a very short while before his beat. But, I mean, to accomplish that still at that age. So I think 85% of our team's success this year is going to be mental. Takes the handoff, gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but he didn't go down. Still stood up. Yeah. Whistle blew. Saved maybe a few more hits. 36. Wave Riders two for seven. On third down. Jones just threw it up top. He's going to get it. It is Jai Miyamoto fighting for it. Got the underneath coverage and the inside positioning. He got the pick. Uh, this is a, a really good play defensively, but uh, a, a tough one for Calakehe because I don't think he should have thrown it. Two guys in coverage, and it looks like he doesn't get a full range of motion on it. And it just doesn't have the power to get up and over because it was underthrown and allowed Kilo to, to, to make a play. If that's up and over and he's running to catch it, it's a good play. See the bottom of that shirt. And a very classy one from John Miyamoto to Ray. Tanadero Martinez, who was injured in the game against Kapole. And uh, everyone's hoping that he has a speedy recovery. And it's nice when the team from the opposing side is recognizing that. And I hope uh, Ray's doing all right. That great family helping for a speedy recovery off the. Interception, Zaya Kanai. Going to be attacked by Wyatt Worsley and Yoshua Jelke. He's out there. Pray for rain. That's rain and Tomadera Martinez, the DB and the junior. That opening game against Kapolei this season. Giant a classy guy. He grew up in Pohola. Watched football with his dad around the age of six. He's a Patriots fan at the time. So he didn't accept. He's like, no, I just knew who the Patriots were at that time. Second and five. Here's Kanai. That is a good game at the middle. And it all starts with the offensive linemen. And some of them, some of them are running right next to him. Up the field. Dominic Cavillis. They even make the tackle. First down. Vikings made up 368 yards in his 27 plays. That's a 13.6 yards of play. I was going to ask you for the average on that. Wow. the 47. And here comes Kanai. Can I ran it down by Wyatt Worsig, the sophomore. Gets about nine yards on the carry. Those are tough nine yards, too. Did you play running back growing up? I did. I played running back uh, 
a ton of running backs uh, collectively on the team. There's a two for the Vikings, usually in the rotation. And a three for Kelly Cade. They went up. Got it to DeFoe. But if DeFoe scored it, the last catch stayed in bounds. Inside the jet, it's first and goal. Mark him all the way down at the four. And a pick of a 40 for DeFoe. Yeah, that is a big time play. Tafuri is coming up with a few of those already tonight. And you can smell the end zone too. You can see it. He was trying everything he could to get there. Gets to the outside and tight ropes too. Nice move. Wow, he's got really good balance too. Able to be hitting the leg and stay up. Here's Kaluna staying up, and he gets in for the touchdown. Counts that one in. Six twenty-seven remaining. Pretty easy drive for Hilo there. Went seventy yards on five plays. Kaluna gets the rushing touchdown. He's First in this second half, and this one is slid through. Well, he's will working it. Go Kaluna. No rushing touchdowns, and he hits it tonight. Hardy's got two. We're on the block coaching. From Waikia to Kia Hawaii, over in Hilo, 1974 Waipahu graduate. So much about the kids, and uh, just really about the sport, wanting to get back. And then this is a, another kick that goes out of bounds. So Trey's uh, a, well, lot of that. Yeah, a little frustrated with himself, but again, he must be exhausted after not leaving the field. Uh -huh. Illegal kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Receivers have elected to take it 25 yards from the spot of the kick. First down. Number 35. now for the Wave Riders, but can they capitalize? 195 yards of offense this evening. The Hathaway Lua wrapped up quickly by Bullet. The clock continues to tick down. You know, for the Vikings, I mean, at this point, Try to bring like your second, third string guys, but you know, almost everyone in theory is going to play. Not because of the situation, but really just because you have the ability to do that. Because you only have about 40 guys in the team. Well, you mentioned a lot of these guys have, haven't even left the field yet. Uh, it's the inescapable inevit in inevitability of in sports, which is injuries, unfortunately. <coughs> They make the tackle on Alakua Lua. I love this guy's motor, man. Yeah, he, you know, he does run hard. That's, there's no doubt about it. He runs hard, he moves the chains, he gets up here, he gets a foot, gets a foot down there. Calicane has just not found uh, the, a way to get into the end zone. That's the hard part. Up top, underthrown, intercepted. Plucked out of the air. Here comes our run back. For Thomas Marcelino had two interceptions against Lahaina Luna last week. He has his third one of the season. I, I really love on the sideline how our Jimmy Bender didn't even flinch. He didn't move. He just kind of stood there stoically. Potential collision on the sideline for him. He stood right there. Marcelino, first year varsity with Hilo, who grew up in Wai'anae, then eventually moved over for opportunities, played freshman year at Kia'au. Got great instincts, got back to finding the ball. I said, what's motivating you this year, outside of winning the bet? He said, I want to make a name for myself. That's one way to do it. 
get a pick. Oh, he's feeling it right now. Yeah, he is. Look at him, pumped up. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who that was. I, maybe his mom came over to the sideline. Swinging out in the head of Josiah Williams. Williams is hung on to. Great job from Jacob Domingo, one of 18 sophomores on this squad. The reserves getting some time. Some fresh bodies in for the Wave Riders. So Marcelino goes in. Oh, look at the bling. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's why he was feeling good. I have one that looks just like that. Mine came from Burton. <laughs> I don't know if it's as uh, swaggy as that one, too. Got a Viking emblem on it, too. Here's Kanai. This is Kanai's 11th rush of the night, and he's rushed already for more than 100 yards. White Horsey coming out of the tackle along with Hero Tilfus.
primary football is secondary. If you look at the success that, you know, this island's had with UA Chino and uh, why it can't win the state championship. Which why can't kill a bit of representatives in the state tournament. More baseball. Right now, he looks got a gigantic lead. Off we go to the fourth. Robin Jones goes to Alika for God. And it's where Robert Fuller Ants able to make the tackle. I like the way he plays. He's playing very hard tonight. Uh, just been all over the field tonight. He's got seven tackles this evening. He's got three catches for 69 yards. We're going to point down right here. short season, I mean, depending on when each individual football program starts. I mean, they try to hit the weight room hard, but I mean, football has become such a year-round sport at this point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, getting, yeah they're getting bigger, faster, stronger, but also, they're, they're, they're getting injured. Yeah. Too. And, 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 you know, there's, you bring up a good point, there, there is a time in, a, in, in the year where you've got to rest your body. Yeah. You can't keep beating it up. You know, I see a lot of kids now, they jump from league to league, and foot, for some, football is all year round for, like, for, with the contact and games and different leagues, and it's... I love I mean, you know, there's just so many different leagues, and it's all year round, and I've never experienced that. And that, uh, to me, um, it's it, that's really difficult for, for players to, to heal, for right. their bodies heal. And for the Vikings, the next time they'll play Kiala K, it will be on September the 30th. This time they'll travel. Two Wave Rider Stadium. We have an interesting road trip right there over at Wine Canada. It's always been a fun rivalry, but 
September 2nd and October 7th. Those are the ones that Viking fans are circling on their calendar. The corner line of matchups. Here's again, Caden Silva is up. It's funny because you talk about you know, the best, best days for circling. I think all the blues aren't going to be back. We win some games. And everybody's got to breathe. And the way the Wildcats lost last year to Lahaina Luna, a very controlled victory by the Lewis. There's a, there's a bitter taste in those players' mouths hoping to rebound and get back to the state tournament and have a deeper run. Well, the Vikings, though, they're dominating this game. They lost to Lahaina Luna last, uh, last week. I think it's you know, just how tough it is. Campus on Wednesday, and then politely asked for sugar. 
was another young kid, and the other two quarterbacks are freshmen in this uh, depth chart. With Lawrence Akualua. Kaneta able to get the tackle. Four minutes to go. More hurdles along the way for these two programs. And UCLA will get their first crack against Cornwall next week, Friday. Stay healthy, definitely going to be key in this division. And for Division One, Ayaz in there, Iolani's in there defending state champs. As Nishihara had the pressure come, and this ball ends up in the direction. The question is, was it caught or was it dropped or will it be a catch for now? Nishishida. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. 15 yards from the end of the play. First down. Again, those are mistakes that don't need to happen at this point in the game. Oh, yeah, went up high for off Tamakaki and then kind of out of frame, but went for the follow through. Yeah. Definitely don't want to get anything hurt this late in the game. Okay, he scores. That'd be a huge win for them and a morale booster. Back on the bus.
some of the corrections that need to be made. I mean, there are a lot of, I've said this, and I, I'm, I'm going to continue to say it, there are a lot of coachable moments in, in tonight's game, and they'll thankfully, uh, from OC16 to you, yes. we'll have some uh, tape to yep. be able to watch. So some great running back play from both sides this evening. The one running back is the Hawaii Honda Beavers. Impact Park, 104 rushing guards tonight, John. He talks with confidence, and he ran with confidence tonight. Really did show some strength, banging away uh, when it was in tight situations, and then running away from guys on the outside. Had some moves, had some skills, and uh, did what he needed to do to move this offense up the field. I really liked what I saw out of him. This next game will be against KL moving forward before they'll have a big matchup against Cornawanda twice in the course of about four and a half weeks. So as the season heats up, it's going to be very interesting in this race for the Division One crown. So you take a look at the Hawaii Honda Dealers impact player for Kiala Kitty. Well, how about a freshman, Lawrence Nahakuelua? Nine yards shy of the century mark, but this guy has been such a tough runner, and he was a gigantic shot deliverer on defense. Yeah, he was. He, he played both sides of the ball very well, but I really liked what I saw out of him uh, with his, his strength. He kept his motor running. Did you say he was a freshman? That is crazy that he is still that young. I mean, if you think about it, he was just playing he was just playing Pop Warner not long ago. Yeah. I mean, here he is on, on one of the bigger stages uh, of high school football and, and dominating with his runs. And uh, very excited on his tackles, too. I, I like what I saw out of him. Time now to take a look at the Taco Bell play of the game. Well, here comes Tohu Kaluna who on the night went 13 to 17, 269 yards and two touchdowns. This one a long ball pulled in by Caden Silva. 56 yards to the end zone. Well, Silva had a couple of opportunities, but I really do like Kaluna. Look at the ball. And that is a perfectly placed ball. He gets it over one defender and inside another defender right to Silva. Big play, and that usually means good things for an offense. A big payoff here at the Big Island for the Hilo Vikings. Two more segments to go before we wrap it up. Here from Paea Stadium, the postgame show is on the way here on Spectrum OC16. On a night where Hilo convincingly gets the win. 52-2. to two.